Hey everyone, it is time for the September garden tour. So today I'm gonna to tour you around my front deck. As a reminder, my deck is 18 by 19 square feet. We are three stories up and everything on here is grown in containers. I can't believe <laughs> this season is almost over. A lot of plants this month are probably gonna get pulled and replaced with things for fall. But August was definitely the month where things started to die. Whether that was from pests or disease, some things in the garden are looking a little bit rough. Although I will say up here on the front, not quite as bad as on the back. But again, neither are terrible. No one really notices the issues as much as I do personally. So I'm still happy with how everything is looking. My garden is the most full it's ever been this year. And for the most part, everything still looks really good. So I'm gonna go tour you around and show you how my front garden is looking for early September. Starting here in the center raised bed, there was just a monarch in here. I'm hoping it comes back. I kind of scared it away, so that's my fault. But in my center raised bed here, I have the Supertunia Vista bubblegum on the outside. And I'm really excited because the beginning of last September, there were no blooms left on it because the budworms ate them all. And I think pretty soon after that, I ended up pulling them, but it does seem like my preventative spray, even though it hasn't kept the budworms completely away, it at least has managed the amount of budworms there so they don't eat all of my flowers. And then in the middle, I have the Supertunia Mini Vista Scarlet, and that's everything that's kind of surrounding the edges. So there's one, Supertunia Vista bubblegum in each corner, so four total, and then one in the front and one in the back of the Supertunia Mini Vista Scarlet. Coming up above is something that doesn't look quite as good, although I will say, on camera, I feel like the garden issues aren't as obvious, which is fantastic when you share your garden on camera. But these are, oh, there's the monarch. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna try not to scare it, so I'll stand back here for a little bit, but there are three different colors of the Zinderella Zinnia variety. And I've done Zinnias in these raised beds now. This will be, I think, the third year um, that I've had these raised beds and I like putting Zinnias in the middle. I harvest these like crazy. I'll completely empty them out and it'll be completely full again with flowers really within a week, back to how it was when I harvested. So that's why I love Zinnias. What I don't love as much is the powdery mildew, especially when these are kind of the center of my front deck garden. So this is what everyone sees right when they walk out. Again, no one really notices the powdery mildew quite as much as I do, but these flowers definitely start to not look as great around this time of year. So that's something I'm trying to decide for next year is, do I wanna do just zinnias? Do I try to rely on them looking good? Or am I fine with just having them through September and then maybe pulling them and planting something else here. So if there's something else that you think might be good, because I'm not doing bulbs in this raised bed this year, so it'll be available for fall planting. I'd like to put something in there that I can also let dry and leave throughout the winter um, for birds or anything else that might want to snack on the dried plants. So let me know your thoughts here. It would have to be something that I would pull in spring, whether it was a perennial or annual or not, to put my annuals in here next year. But, Getting up closer here. Oh, and I see a little cucumber beetle. So I had the three colors in here. I have Zinderella Red, which is this one right here. Zinderella Peach, which I think for the front garden is just too, I don't know, kind of pastel of a color. I like brighter colors up here. And then I have right here, Zinderella Purple, although this one is looking a little bit haggard. It's usually, there we go, that brighter color. That's the one with the little beetle inside the center and you can see here the powdery mildew more up close so not only have i been having issues with the powdery mildew but i'm also having issues i think because i wasn't staying on top of pruning them as i should have been uh keeping them upright has been an issue so if you come over here i think you'll see there's now a cage that was on one of my dahlias that is in this bed so this is not the bed's good side and it's being very poorly held up with twine. Uh, so I have different pieces of twine going to different zinnias, and you can see they're just kind of all over the place, but not as bad as they were before I added that in there. So definitely some things that I'm gonna keep in mind for next year is staying on top of pruning these, probably keeping these a little bit shorter 
since they are already elevated off of the ground in the raised bed. They're about three feet off of the deck. I'm gonna definitely thin them much more because I don't think I did any thinning at all just to keep the airflow going through. And I'm going to preventatively treat for powdery mildew similar to what I did for the budworms on the petunias. And that's what I'm gonna do differently for next year. So that's the center raised bed. Down here then we have this one pot, which does have four plants in it, although you might not be able to tell. So what is still kind of the star of the show right here is the rock and blue suede shoes salvia. That's done great. I have two more in my garden. There's always flowers on them. The beads and the hummingbirds love them. So I'm definitely gonna plant more of these next year. This was also my first year planting lantana and I love it so much. Uh, it's very drought tolerant, which is great when I, you know, maybe forget to water a container. And this one is the luscious citrus blend. That's always like a tongue twister for me to say, but I love it. It's stayed healthy. The green or the leaves are really green and healthy. The flowers are beautiful and bold. It is perfect. I also have in here uh, the A Romance Mulberry Nemesia. There's a little bit of it right there. It's kind of gotten taken over. And then I also did have the Super Bells Prism Pink Lemonade. I think that's some of the remnants of it there. So a problem I have, and I'm sure some of you might feel the same way, is that when I plant things, they're so much smaller than they're going to be. So I shove more than I should in a container. So it looks pretty for a little bit with all four and then something will start to take over. But to be fair then, that just means that now it looks pretty with two plants before it looked pretty with four plants. But this is also one of the pots that I'm gonna be taking inside to transition it to a houseplant pot because it is ceramic a little bit more delicate in the winter. Um, so I'm gonna bring this one inside after I empty it out. Coming through this pathway, which continues to get more and more narrow throughout the season. And then we will start first with my flower cart. So this is my flower cart. And on the top of it, obviously I have my morning glory or at least the packet was labeled morning glory. The flowers look like moonflower. I'm not 100% sure if it's like if moonflower is a type of morning glory. So let me know if you know down below or if they are kind of two different species, but it was full of blooms. You can see there's still some remnants of blooms. I would say maybe two to three weeks ago, every morning there'd be a ton of blooms and they would stay on there until the sun really hit this side of the deck. So maybe around like 1 p.m. And it was stunning. Um, I love how it looks with the flowers. I don't think this one flowered at all last year. So I'm glad that it did this year, just so I can see what it looks like. But even if it hadn't, I mostly grow these for the leaves, which just completely cover this cart. And to me, it looks really magical. In the hanging basket on the right, I have the Pachoa, which is the hybrid of Petunia and Calibrachoa. And I think I mentioned this before, but this hasn't had any issues with budworms, even though I think budworms do eat both petunias and calibrachoa. Also, it's not sticky, which is one of the benefits of the hybrid, but I am intrigued to add more of these to my garden next year and see if it does or does not have budworm issues on it. It's not quite as vigorous as like the Supertunia vistas, but I have trimmed it multiple times and it still looks really pretty. It's been fuller than this, um, but even this still makes me happy to look at. Then I have the clowning around caladiums in the center, which I just shifted forward because I killed the other plants uh, that were in here. And then I have lantana again over here, which I have loved. I water this maybe once or twice a week and it doesn't die. So really appreciate lantana. We'll probably add more next year as well. Uh, let's not forget my little corner fern. Hello. This was originally on the back deck. Didn't like this that it got there. This is the shadiest part. So now it just lives here and it gets watered when I remember it's over here and it seems pretty happy. So that's all I can actually ask for. Then in this pot, I have three plants, which I think you can still see some of each. So I had the truffula pink Gomfrina right there. I had the sparkling rose superbina. And then I have more Nemesia. I think you can kind of see right here the Nemesia that is left in the pot. But again, that one kind of got taken over by the other ones. So I'll kind of remember that for next year. 
Nemesia especially seems to be easy to get taken over except for one of the other pots I have on this deck. The Nemesia is doing great. So I don't know, but I think I'm going to give that one more space next year or maybe with just less vigorous plants. Another petunia I've loved is the Supertunia Saffron Finch. This is another new for 2024. So pretty. I don't have enough yellow flowers and I definitely feel like I need more in my garden. So I would love to grow this one again next year. Now a plant I think I killed because I thought I was watering it and I don't think I was. I gave it a drink. We'll see if it bounces back. Um, but this is the Super Bells Double Vintage Coral. So this one was my favorite. You can see how pretty the flowers were. I'm at the point in the season where if things die, I'm not that sad because it's time to start emptying out pots anyway um, for some fall planting. So this doesn't make me as sad as it would have like a month ago. And then over here, I had the Super Bells Double Ruby. This one has kind of come in and out of bloom. Right now it's on as flush with bloom, but still really pretty. I loved the Super Bells Double Series. Um, and then we have the Super Bells Double Redstone. And then over here in this pot, before I forget, this is also the Supertunia Mini Vista Scarlet. And then this is the Bright Lights Horizon Osteosperma, which has again come in and out of bloom. It tends to bloom more in the cooler parts of spring and fall. It's just starting to flush back, but on the back deck tour, you will see it in its prime, I hope. Assuming that it still looks as good. I, I think I have some video saved, even if it doesn't look as good when I do the tour, so you can see what it kind of looked like at its prime. But I love how this flower looks, at least how it looks on the back deck here. Not quite as stunning. Over here now to my herb garden on either side, I have one more of the salvias on each side. Again, absolutely love them. They are filled with pollinators all throughout the day. And then behind and in the center, I have the herbs on my herb rack. And I've said this before, but it's kind of been a hit or miss year with herbs. Typically, I would say the majority of my herbs do well. And this year, well, they definitely took a little bit longer to start growing. That happened with a lot of plants just because of the weather. But some of them just never really bounced back and some did, but some also did fantastic. Um, speaking of my pineapple sage right here, has done great. They're all in an eight inch terracotta pot. And this one I think is definitely grown the most of any of the herbs I have. Over here I have my oregano and you can see that's the only branch left. Oregano has been very strange. Um, so what happened was I planted one in this pot. It kind of immediately died. So I emptied out the soil thinking there was some sort of issue. I cleaned out the pot. I put a new oregano plant in there, which did survive longer but you can see kind of what's left. It's like every stem died except for that one. So really odd, and I'm not sure exactly what it was that happened with my oregano this year. Then over here, I have another sage plant. This one was definitely slower to take off, but now that it has taken off, it still looks a pretty good size. I actually need to go through and harvest these. Maybe I'll do that tonight. Um, after I finish the garden tours. I have lemon thyme here. This definitely also did not get as large as it did last year. I have a pot of chives, which has done really well. I have regular mint, which is doing better, but it also had a lot of like yellow spotting on the leaves. I kept trimming it back, fertilizing it, and eventually it started to look a bit healthier, but it definitely hasn't been as robust. I mean, I've barely harvested off of this one and this is as large as it is. Usually they get much larger and much crazier with their growth. The chocolate mint back here has done really well. This one I've harvested multiple times and you can see it is much bigger than the regular, I think it was just sweet mint plant that I have. So I absolutely love chocolate mint. I'm glad it did so well. I might get to next year just to be safe in case I have some more issues with mint. Then I have tucked in there, regular time. I have dill, which looks pretty much dead that I need to pull. I was leaving that there for caterpillars and I don't know if maybe, you well, know, the soil still looks moist. I was gonna say maybe the drip emitter fell out, but the soil still looks like it's been getting watered. So I need to pull that. I need to pull a lot of things <laughs> in this garden before we head out of town. Then we have lemon balm. And this one made me sad because this was one of my favorites last year to make tea with similar to the pineapple sage. 
And this is what was kind of happening with the mint. I think you can see there, the leaves just don't look healthy and they never did. And all of these were potted using the same soil. So it wasn't like the Vigoro soil issue that I've had before. Good quality soil, worked for some, didn't work for others. Then over here, I have my parsley. Oh, there's the monarch again. Um, parsley in here, which has done pretty well. I definitely need to harvest from there. And then down at the bottom, tucked below there, boop, is my rosemary, which has also done well. Swinging over now to this corner of my garden are my two raspberry bushes, which very easily filled in the space. Now, one of them I cut all the way back, and then one of them I just removed last year's canes, or the two-year-old canes and both of them had two harvests of berries they're just starting to produce their second harvest i think you can see back there there are some that look ready to be picked but i always thought if you cut all the way back to the ground then that means it would only had one harvest but i don't know it's had two so sometimes i guess nature is just weird i didn't really notice a performance difference between either of them the ones that i just removed the old canes or the one i cut back and since cutting back is easier then remembering which canes to remove or figuring that out, I think I'm just gonna cut them both back to the ground um, in early spring. So that's what's in this corner. Then I have this pot, which is also going to become a houseplant pot after it is emptied out. This had a blueberry plant in it. It was like the fourth one that's gotten blight. So I'm done with blueberries, but I do love how this turned out. So in here I have floss flower in the front a blanket flower back left and a star flower on the right and this has kind of been my color palette i mean i have more colors but in general i've been kind of having more pinks oranges and like purpley blues in the garden so i really like how this pot came together then i have the aqua pot here which similar to the pot up front there were multiple plants in here that some took over <laughs> so in the back here i have the unplugged pink salvia there's two plants in here um, again i've loved the salvia they lasted pretty long for me too into the season last year i had one of these that i won from the grand garden show uh, then i have the a romance mulberry nemesia which is doing much better in this pot it's interesting to see how different plants perform like still even in your garden just in different spaces and then there was another of the pink lemonade super bells but that as you can see got taken over there was also an echinacea in here somewhere that you can no longer see so i don't know if i will maybe i'll try to find that plant after i clean this out and move it somewhere since it should come back in another container over winter just fine but it might be lost forever then coming up above here i have one of my favorites my gomfrina bed these are so low maintenance i've done nothing except watering and remembering to fertilize when I do remember. No pest issues, no disease issues, looks really pretty. I love Gomfrina so much. So the varieties I have here are QIS Carmine, which is this deeper pink. This one here, I think it's called Red Purple uh, Gomfrina. I have Raspberry Cream, which is this lighter pink, and then the if you can see the difference the even lighter pink is qis pink so this one's qis pink this one's raspberry cream and then i also have a qis orange in there oh it's audrey red purple audrey purple red i'll try to write the right name of this gomfrina below but the purple one is audrey purple red i believe quick butterfly break are you laying some eggs down below the Gomfrina, I have Super Junior Royal Magenta on the corners. These were probably the worst with budworms. It ate almost all of them. They're bouncing back right now. And then in the middle, I have Super Bells Double Yellow, which I think for next year, my Super Bells seem to do better in smaller pots and not necessarily like on borders of beds with more plants in them. So I think that's going to be my plan for next year but this corner right here i feel like is one of my favorites because i mean if you stand right here you can't even really see the containers it's almost like this is all just growing in mass out of my deck so i really love when i'm in my chair right here this is basically my view see now this is the center beds good side with the zinnias because you can't see 
the tomato cage that's holding them all together. It almost looks like they're just doing it all on their own. So if I ever take any photos of this bed, that's why it's from this angle. All right, let's head down again. This path is getting narrower and narrower. I have my rhubarb plant, which I have two. There's one on the other end there, but this one was the one that I think got stunted with some late season surprise cold. It only ever put out a few leaves and I've harvested from it. They taste fine. It looks healthy. I'm hoping next year it'll come back more its normal size. I have a strawberry plant down here with some strawberries that I know I need to harvest. There's actually two strawberry plants in that galvanized pot. And then I have, well, my three 30 gallon grow bags over here on the left. There's a basil, which is loving its life. My basil has done really well this year. Growing tall in there with the sun dipper tomatoes. There's some that I can harvest in there too. This one is an indeterminate tomato type. So it's been producing for, I don't even know how long, at least a month now, constantly harvesting tomatoes from it. I do have to prune it to keep the size in check, but I love the fruit. Um, I love the shape of the fruit. Um, I'm probably going to have, I think, at least another one of this exact same variety next year. Down here in front, in a seven gallon grow bag, is my ground cherry, which I thought one plant wouldn't be enough. It's made so many ground cherries. There's new ones on the ground every day. I think you can see some down right there below the leaves. It's one that I forget to harvest though, because the fruit falls when it's ready to harvest. So I keep forgetting to like pick up the plant and actually look underneath it. In fact, let's head back there right now and just lift up a branch here. And I think this, oh, just dropped one off. But I think you can see here, there's a ground cherry right there. And I also zoomed in three times. So there we go. So yeah, there's definitely some in there to harvest. Next, I have my giant Veneri zinnias. I think there's five in this 30 gallon grow bag. And these also don't have any powdery mildew. They're my only zinnias that have no powdery mildew. And I am thankful for that. Um, but this is a mix. So I don't 100% know the color names of each of these. I do believe though that this one is salmon. I have some like light pink. I have a true kind of orange color one. I've harvested some white ones. And then I think that one up here is one of my favorites. It's something rose, coral rose. Um, but I think it's sold out on Johnny's Seed where I got them. So I'm gonna try to save one of the heads of these zinnia so I have seeds for next year. My problem with saving zinnia seeds is I keep harvesting them so much that I don't want to leave them on the plant. But I'm gonna try to do that with at least the varieties that I want to grow specifically next year instead of just relying on whatever is going to happen with the mix. Here is another one of my aqua pots. There's a dianthus in the middle, more of the luscious citrus lantana on the corners. Um, there is the mini vista, super shiny mini vista scarlet. And then there was a double bells or super bells double somewhere in here that has now disappeared. Um, the aqua pots have done really great. So during a typical like week in the summer, like maybe like 70 to 80 degree weather, I fill it up one time. Uh, during the two days when we had 100 degree heat, I needed to fill it up like within 36 hours. So do keep that in mind depending on your environment. But for me in Chicago throughout the majority of the summer, I have filled it up once every week. Hello again. All right, I've hopped over to the other side of that little pathway because it's easier to kind of see over here, at least I think problem with a small garden is you fill it up too much and then it's hard to move around but this right here is aroma tomato I have loved this so this is my first year growing a determinate tomato variety I've done no pruning it stayed a manageable height and size and I actually don't mind kind of waiting longer for the fruit to develop so unlike the indeterminate variety which kind of puts out fruit throughout the entire season these ripen all within like the same few weeks. So which is great if you want to can or make something with it. So that's why I think I want one of each. I think I want one of the indeterminate where I'm getting tomatoes constantly and one of the determinate. And maybe I could fit one more in here if I wanted to sacrifice some flowers, but I don't think I want to. So there we go. 
Uh, down in front in more seven gallon grow bags, I have a bell pepper over on this side, which I need to get in there and harvest some of those probably tonight too. I have my jalapeno pepper, which I just cleaned out recently, but there are more peppers on there now. This one was the chocolate cherry candy cane pepper. These taste just like bell peppers. I don't think I've left any on long enough. So the reason they're called chocolate cherry, uh, what is it? Chocolate cherry candy cane <laughs> is that if you leave them on here, they turn, you know, red with white variegation. But these I love just cause they're pretty. The leaves are pretty, the peppers are pretty. I think it's just a really fun plant to have in the garden. Then this pot down here, I have the Hoopla Vivid Orchid Petunia, which one of the pots that was planted identically to this, I pulled. This is the remaining pot. I gave it a good trim and some fertilizer and it is flushing back. There's another Nemesia back there, the A. Romance Mulberry Nemesia. And then there was an Apple Blossom Begonia, which was on the back deck, got taken over by a Silver Wave Petunia. I moved it here. Um, kind of forgot to water since I just transplanted, but it's not dead. It didn't look great. It didn't look terrible. So I'm going to leave that for now. Now in this raised bed right above that pot on the corners, I have Super Junior Vista Jazzberry, which I don't know if these have really had much issues with the budworms this year, but they still look good. Um, in the middle, I have the Super Junia Mini Vista Ultramarine, which I think this bed has just too much going on for that to compete. So the initial plan for this bed was to have a bunch of native flowers so i ordered what was called a midwest wildflower mix assuming it would be wildflowers native to the midwest but turns out that is not correct uh, it's just a bunch of flowers that aren't necessarily native in fact i don't know if there's anything native growing in here but there's been cosmos there's been cornflower i've it's been like nice to look at it's been really pretty throughout the season because it was a wildflower mix there were plants in there that come and go at different times throughout the season so I haven't really had to do much. The pollinators are still all over it, it just wasn't what I had intended. So I'm not sure 100% what I'm going to do next year. I think trying to clean out this bed might be a little bit difficult just with all the seeds that might be in it but we'll kind of see. Um, I might just maybe introduce some more native plants. I don't know. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with this yet but it looks pretty. The cosmos in my garden have looked really pretty this year. Down here I have the dahlia that never grew after it reached that height of the cage but doesn't look terrible so I can't pull it. Uh, we have an American Dawn dahlia which I did harvest the flower from but there's one right on the other side that I'll show you in just a second. And then let's swing this way. I have two seven gallon grow bags of potatoes. I thought they were getting ready to harvest and then they put out new leaves. So I know you're supposed to harvest them when they look almost completely dead. They were getting there and then a bunch of new growth started happening. So this is my first year growing potatoes. Let me know if I should be doing something, if I should pull them now or if I should wait. I don't know. It was a surprise to me when all this new growth started to appear. In this raised bed now, I have on the corners the Supertunia Vista Fuchsia. And then in the middle, I have another one of the Super Bells Double Orange, and I think this one is stunning. It's also one of my favorite colors because it's like orange in the middle and kind of pink on the outside. I also still have in this bed the Mystery Seed, which was the Mexican Tarragon. I'm probably going to harvest this relatively soon. I thought I pulled all the status, but there's still some remnants of it in there. And then I have my peas, which I planted just a few weeks ago that have all sprouted. The plan is to get them growing up my sunflower trellises here and these are doing exactly what they did last year so they're single stem sunrich summer provence sunflowers i cut off the main head a bunch of smaller flowers started popping up along the nodes on the stem and then the ones at the top are kind of aging faster than the ones on the bottom but i still think this looks really pretty i leave this up all through the winter and then i will pull it in the spring and i will use the dried stalks again for supports in my garden. Oh, I almost forgot. Here is the other rhubarb. So this is the rhubarb that looks more normal, like how a normal rhubarb would. It looks full. It's been great. I've harvested a lot from it. It's the third year, I think, for these rhubarb plants. So this one has done well. They're in the same pot. They were out at the same time. I'm not sure what happened to the other one coming this direction. I was going to put my hose away, but why lie about how my garden normally looks? Um, this is more of the truffle of pink gomfrina in there. 
And then I have my blooming dahlias. Okay, so lots of things exciting happening here. First off, this is the American Dawn Dahlia, which I'll probably deadhead these, not deadhead, but pick them for bouquets tonight. But they are really pretty. I like the combination again of like the orange in the middle and then kind of pink and purple tones as you head to the outside. This has been blooming like crazy, not as much as my Otto's Thrill Dahlia on the back deck, but it's been the second most productive in terms of flower production. And you can see the pollinators enjoy it. Now behind that one, what I'm super excited about is this Dahlia. This is the first flower this Dahlia has put out. So this is the same one, same variety, I think, as the one that is stunted on the other side. Now I thought I purchased Penhill Watermelon, but I know earlier in the season, one didn't sprout, so then I replaced it, but I thought I replaced it with Penhill Watermelon. And if you know what that one looks like, it does not look like this. Um, but I think this is really beautiful. I've never grown a dolly that looks like this before with kind of the thinner petals. I don't know the variety. I did do Google search and it kind of gave me like so many different ones. So if this variety looks really familiar to you, let me know what it is. But I was just glad to get one flower off of it so far. And there's still some buds. And these typically bloom, I mean, pretty well into October. So I still have a month and a half-ish to get more flowers off of these. But if you want more flowers, just remember to keep removing the blooms on your dahlias. And then I guess last, I think that's it, is my pumpkin. Well, my pumpkin, there's more pineapple sage here, which has done great, kind of tucked in there. There was a strawberry plant that has been lost to the pumpkin. And then I have one pumpkin plant up there that I can probably harvest now. And then the other one is down here. And that one just recently started to turn orange. So it's almost all orange in there right now. So two pumpkins from this plant. I have never successfully grown pumpkins before. They usually get diseased before I can get a pumpkin from them. So having two is great, but I still think in general, this is too much space being taken up by a plant in my small garden. So I don't know if in the future I will grow pumpkin or not. I think this one was sent from Burpee, so I wasn't planning to grow pumpkins, but if they're gonna send me a free pumpkin plant, I'm going to plant it. And now we'll do just a final sweep of the front deck garden. Honestly, not too much is looking too terrible yet, other than I'd say the zinnias in the center bed, which again, aren't even that bad. Um, just bad to me. But this garden is still really full. I think I still have a good amount of time with these plants, um, but I am gonna start pulling some just to make room for some fall planting. So that's how my front deck garden looks early September. I will be touring the back deck in the next video, so stay tuned for that. And I think what's coming up in September is going to be a lot of pulling plants, replacing them with things for fall, maybe pulling plants and not replacing with anything, but temperatures are getting cooler. The sun is setting earlier, so I can definitely tell we are headed near the end of the garden season, but we still have a little bit of time left. I will link down below the playlist of the garden tours for previous months for this year, in case you want to see how the garden looked in the past. And I will see you in the next video.